today we're going to talk about sexy lady quilts. Let's see. I sold my first art quilt when I was pregnant with Cadence, and Cadence turned 17 this Saturday. So I've been making art quilts for almost two decades now, and above and beyond, by far, my favorite subject matter has always, always, always been women. When I first started um, art quilting, you know, my ex-husband was a tattoo artist, and we would go to all these tattoo conventions, and I had lots of big name tattoo friends, and they would always like give me these sketches, and then I would turn them into quilts and I didn't really do a lot of my own drawings now I was an art major in college I didn't finish college but I really enjoyed the experience um, and it was invaluable to me as an artist the things that I learned and I was also very very lucky um, to go to a high school that had a phenomenal art program and I started off as a painting major you know I was always very um, heartfelt you know a, a sensitive kid and I just had all these emotions that I wanted to pour onto canvas but I was never good at painting you know I have very poor fine motor control and you know it was just a frustrating experience to me because I wanted to create beautiful things and they weren't coming out the way I had them in my mind so when I started working with Chance um, you know they would give me these incredible drawings so the first one I did was um, this nurse here um, and Chance just drew it up on a whim like a cool classic image you know and I loved it and you can see her face is a little flat I was just starting to learn and figure out portraiture and when you're working with you know skin tone and stuff too, being able to create the lines in the face and have them stand out with thread is a tricky thing so um, one of the next ones I did was this gypsy here that I love so much and as you can see you're starting to be able to see the structure in her face show up a little bit more I was getting better um, but I hadn't learned a lot of techniques when it came to um, using things like stabilizer to you know and in and, and good thread and stuff like that I was just learning as I go because I'm self-taught um, one one of my favorite, favorite, favorite pieces I ever did um, with Chance is um, these two um, companion pieces. They were bitter and sweet and they were opposites and I loved them. These were the first two that I felt like, yeah, I'm really getting somewhere like the jawline and the angle and the like, you can just, you know, you're starting to feel it. And then um, from there, after that, I did the Guadalupe which is this is one of my all-time favorite quilts I had made a decision you know he'd drawn it as a Virgin Mary and I had this one fabric that I really loved and the darker and I was like why don't I switch her skin tone you know I haven't done anyone with a darker skin tone so then it became the Guadalupe and I was like oh yes I love this still one of my all-time favorite projects I ever did and that after that one I think I was just really hooked on this like female imagery so from there we did um, we did another Virgin Mary which was a custom order and then I did this geisha with chance those were all with chance um, and then I did um, with Rodney Rains I had a client who had a tattoo on his leg that he wanted recreated so Rodney sent me all the sketches and stuff you know we worked together and I did this um, this octopus quilt which was really really exciting I think when I did the octopus was like the first time I really looked at something and was like I'm fucking badass like this is awesome like who gets to do this and with Rodney Rains me but <laughs> so you know push comes to shove me and chance end up getting a divorce and cadence gets diagnosed with autism and um i couldn't keep working the tattoo circuits so you know when i stopped doing the tattoo circuits um i stopped getting the cooler custom orders i start you know um and uh uh, you know, I started producing more um, artwork that I felt was kind of like commercially geared towards, you know, like if I'm doing a show in Old Town, I'm going to do, you know, quilts of trains. And I would do, worked a gun show and I did a bunch of gun quilts, which mind you, the gun quilts sold really well. You want to sell a quilt, just make an outline of an AK-47 and slap it on some fabric. Some dude will buy it, I promise you. I've sold several. So anyway, um... The last quilt that I did uh, with Chance was I had um, um, a military member who was overseas. He wanted a quilt that was a portrait of his wife, but he wanted her like a sexy pinup, like poker pinup. And Chance had drawn this drawing and I was not happy with it at all. And at this time our relationship was not going well. And we were arguing about this quilt because I wanted him to redraw it because I really didn't think it captured her face. 
and he was just done with it, you know? And um, so I had to sit down and redraw the face for this quilt and it came out awesome. I mean, it looked just like her. Once I had to, was forced to draw this quilt, I realized like, I can draw, <laughs> you know? I went to art school, like I can draw. You know, I don't need to be relying on other people um, to produce what's in my heart and in my mind. So that, you know, that conflict with him actually opened up a whole new chapter of me creating what I affectionately call my sexy lady quilts. So um, during my divorce, you know, it was stressful and emotional. It was a hard time period for me. I have... Um, an old back injury and I had actually had the the gypsy quilt that I had made I had actually traded that to a custom corset maker that I met at a tattoo convention in Salt Lake City years ago and when my back would go out I would lace up the corset and use it to support my back and you know relieve some of the pain so um, the first quilt that I drew that was really a quilt for me was this one and I called it the turning point and you know the the corset that she's wearing is really supposed to represent my pain you know and the red flowers falling are representing my tears and you know blah 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 the whole deal but anyways when I was done with that I stepped back and looked at it and was like wow like I really like that was the first time that I felt like my quilt showed like me, like the way I felt like this was my art. This wasn't just a skill where I'm recreating someone else's art, like this one was mine. Um, and so from there I produced um, another quote that I call Willow, which was my all, uh, this was also during my divorce and relationships and things when I was feeling vulnerable. Um, and I was really happy with this quote because I feel like you really kind of get that like vulnerability, but also strength and kind of like determination from her that even though she's, she's vulnerable, she's going to make it through. And I loved, I loved making this quilt. I don't know what it was about her feet. Like I just loved the way her toes came out. <laughs> I, loved her feet. I don't know what it was with the toes. I just really liked them. But that quilt I think was the first time that I realized that like, my frustration that I'd had as a young painter, not being able to produce the images in my head, was no longer a problem. All of a sudden I realized, I'm still painting, I'm just painting with fabric, you know? And that quilt hung at the uh, Mid-Atlantic Quilt Festival and this, I was standing behind this woman and she was staring at it and she was just like, this is gorgeous. And like, she loved it. She had no idea I was standing behind her and, and heard her comments to her friend. And it just, it made me feel so incredible that even just one person kind of got, you know, what, I, where I was going with this, you know, and, um, and that's what art is, right? You know, you're communicating, you know, your vision to someone else through a medium. So um, in that time period, I made my first ever like true self portrait, um, which was a picture of me holding, you know, kind of like Eve reference, holding an apple with a snake. And it was the um, Hoffman challenge. And the Hoffman challenge every year, they put out a, a fabric line and a, and, a, and a main fabric. And you have to work that fabric into your quilt. And if you do it in a creative way, you know, they choose you and then your stuff can travel around the country to different quilt shows where people get to see it. So I was super excited about that and it got accepted. And, um, you know, I was so excited that I didn't take really good pictures of it before I sent it off. I just sent it off. And um, to this day, these pictures are all I have because when they shipped it back, it got stolen. Somebody stole it from the mail and I had to go, you know, it was shipped, it was insured, it was tracked. And we, I had to go through the whole thing with the post office and um, it was just a real bummer. Um, and then Hoffman sent me a bunch of fabric, um, it, you know, to make up for the loss of the quilt. Um, but I'm still curious who in America has a picture of me hanging on their wall right now. Because somebody has it. It was stolen. Somebody's got it. Who knows? But somewhere in the world, somebody has a portrait of me hanging on their wall. Um, so <laughs> that was super frustrating and like heart wrenching because that was one quilt. That was like the first one that I really made that was like, yes, this is my art. This is me. I'm expressing myself. And now somebody else owns it. And I wasn't nearly as emotional. So I didn't have as much, you know, like crap that I needed to pour out of me um, into art. And I had, the, I had started this one quilt that I really, really love called The Meeting. And I had the idea that I just wanted to start telling a story. So like the first quilt would be like, 
this woman is like running away from a ball in the south and she's gonna get in a boat in the swamp and go meet somebody but who is she gonna meet you know and then the next quilt would you know be the meeting of like maybe her and a man or just a man in the swamp or who knows you know I wanted to like begin this story it was going along incredible I loved everything about it until it got to her face and for whatever reason you know I could not just get the lines in her face right her face to me was always crooked so I had worked on this quilt banged it out and then I let it sit for I think almost three years before I finally just said you know what F it we're rolling with it she's crooked face girl I don't care everybody loved it nobody it never bothered anyone the way it bothered me you know and and I sold it just fine um so which is great so I never have to look at it ever again <laughs> <laughs> or never have to look at her face. I like everything else about the quilt. It's just up in here, you know? Um, after that was like, oh shit, COVID. You know, there's no art during COVID. There's nothing but making masks during COVID. That's all I've done for the last two years, practically, it feels like. You know, I'm, I'm lucky that I have some really wonderful clients like Tina and Carrie who always kept me busy with custom orders. You know, and I've always had the shows and things like that. But for the last two years, it has been pretty much nonstop, like, you know, commercial stuff. Um, and I am so, so, so ready to get back into some art. And I don't know what I did with it. Here it is. Found it. Very limited on space here, you know, so we do a lot of stacking. Lots of stacking and folding in bins. So for those of you that were with me through all of last year and my breakup and everything else, I sat down one day out of complete and total frustration and I made a self-portrait. This was a photo I had taken of myself several years ago when I was also very frustrated with my relationship. And I just took a self-portrait and then last year I banged it out and decided to turn it into a quilt. As always, you got to look at the back. Love the back. Always look at the back. Does it look like me? <laughs> it does when I'm mad. But anyway, um, we d I did that one last year and that was really the only like sexy lady quilt type thing I've done in a while. Um, but what I had tried was before COVID, um, I had decided that I wanted to produce a handful of smaller art quilts to try to sell more quilts in my booth, which when it came to quilts with guns on it, worked really well. But when it came to, you know, other quilts that were just kind of like, unless it was a quilt of a bird, you know, it was kind of hit or miss with sales. So, you know, my female quilts have always been so popular, but they're usually very large, you know, like painting size and they're fairly pricey. So I had worked up this one quilt that I really loved and um, I decided to do it on a smaller scale thinking like this will be a little more affordable, you know, for somebody. And it was this one, which is a moment alone. So I had put this sketch up um, I don't know on my Instagram or Facebook or something last whenever I made it which was I guess like two years ago I think um, and my mom saw the sketch and before I even started producing it and she was like I want that quilt when it's done I want that quilt I'll pay you for it blah 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 and I was like alright that's cool but what she had envisioned from the sketch was like what I've created in the past these full size you know wall hanging type quilts and so when it was done um, she was kind of like oh <laughs> That wasn't really what I had pictured um, and then so her request to me was make it again make it bigger and I'll pay you for it and I was like well you know being a, an artist my first reaction was like that's not how this works mom and I know you're watching this mom but so anyways that's not how this works mom this is a one-of-a-kind you know piece of art like I don't go around recreating things I made you know they come from my emotional place and how am I supposed to re-emotion this <laughs> so I spent the better part of a year looking at this frustrated and annoyed as hell about how am I I can't just draw a body onto her you know I mean I suppose I could but I felt like it would be awkward and weird and I'd worked up some sketches that I thought would work and I just I wasn't into the idea of recreating something I already created Created. So it wasn't flowing for me. So anyways, I was sitting in my hot tub um, That I paid for with my mask money my mask tub that I love so much and um, I was looking at this beautiful um, Red begonia that I got from bimbo 
And I mean, you can see the red was like fire, you know, I mean, it was just like this red that was like beyond red, you know, and there was this twisted branch there in the background and it was kind of making an S shape. And I was just thinking how cool that little branch was. And, you know, I had my like twinkle lights up around the, the hot tub and it was just, I was looking at this plant and this branch and this vine and I was thinking like, hey, that could be a really cool like backdrop for a sexy lady quilt. Um, and so I took a photo of it and, uh, and you know, the people I live with are looking at me like I'm insane because here I am in the hot tub, climbing out, getting my phone, taking a picture of a branch, <laughs> but I'm an artist. So that's how art works. <laughs> that's what I tell them anyways. I'm not sure if they believe me. So regardless, it suddenly hit me just a couple weeks ago that I could take that backdrop that I love so much and implant this lady and I can see her in that background. I could see this, you know, her reading in the garden, and, you know, so then the wheels start turning and then I'm like, okay, mom, I'm ready to do it now. So the next sexy lady quilt on the board is going to be a remake of this, which will be a first for me. I've never remade anything that I have already, um, done so it'll be interesting and we'll see how it goes and thank goodness I saved the original sketch because that'll make it a lot easier to build from so um other than that I have I really want to do a huntress so since I've been talking to the quilting cowboy you know a huntress is something I've been thinking about for a long time I had planned to do the renaissance festival here and it got canceled you know when COVID hit um and I had all these quilt ideas of like warrior women and like damsels in distress and you know doing like a Rapunzel in a tower and all these great you know just like the fantasy and those classic themes that I saw, thought would sell really well you know I was very excited about the Renaissance Festival because very much like the Tattoo Festival you have people that are super into their hobby and that really appreciate art you know that want to decorate their house like like their hobby and invest a decent amount of money in this hobby so they're not going to shy away from you know spending some money on something that they really love that's my people you know that's what i need and it's been canceled two years in a row so i've never I haven't got to test this theory yet um, if the Renaissance Festival will be similar to the tattoo conventions in that way um, but I'm looking forward to 2022 so um, hopefully I will make it there <laughs> but anyway um, the Huntress is the next one so we're gonna do this one for my mom um, now that I've got it in my head the way I want it it'll be fairly quick and easy for me it's the planning that takes forever I have to you know, it, it, I plan it, I think about it, I brainstorm it, and then once it's locked into place, it's like, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. I can crank it out, piece of cake. So after this one, so I've been talking to the Quilting Cowboy, and I was just looking at his color schemes for his fabric line, and all I was thinking was, oh, the Huntress. Like, these are the colors, you know, these woodsy colors and, and all this different stuff. And and I um, and I started a, a sketch yesterday, and it's going well, and I'm really excited. So the art quilts are coming, and I hope you guys will stay tuned and watch as this progresses. You know, this one's the next on the block, so we're going to get to that toot sweet. And then, you know, the quilt for me, I should probably, like put a backing on it or something I suppose or I can just keep it folded up and tucked away for the rest of my life who knows we'll see what happens <laughs> as always thank you guys so much for joining me um and I love to sit and chat with you about fabric and if you have any questions or comments please put them down below and I will be sure to keep you updated on the huntress and uh, mom's quilt and everything that's coming on around the bend so take care y'all and I hope to see you soon